All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukal Kodash. <clears throat> I want to say double honors to the apostles and the bishop elders of Great Millstone for teaching his word and truth and sincerity and for ruling well. And salutations to my fellow Akim across the four corners of the globe, preaching and prophesying in the name of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Hey, this is the brother Gabar Yahweh Duff from GMS Hawaii. Coming to you with another lesson. <clears throat> Today's lesson is on Second Edris chapter 7. We're going to read through. This whole chapter, Lord willing, it'd be edifying. Um, the Spirit has jumped on me to look something up, and it led me to Second Edward chapter seven. And as I read this, started reading from the top, you know, the Spirit just jumped on me and said, "Do a lesson." So that's what I'm going to do. All right. And again, I hope that it's edifying. You know, <clears throat> and these kind of lessons are good. You know, it's a lot of controversy we can talk about. Definitely the prophecies, number one. But hey, there's a lot of prophecies within this particular chapter because. We are as a nation of Israel, the true children of Israel, okay? <clears throat> We're about to inherit a new world, okay? And our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, through his father, Yahweh, you know, he sacrificed his life so that we can inherit that. And in this life that we live in, especially when you're in this truth, there's many perils, shit. Even when you was in the world, there were, you had to go through a lot of trials and tribulations. But <clears throat> as Yahweh Shai said, let me get that real quick. Um, ooh. This is the book of Acts, chapter uh, 14, verse 22. <clears throat> Acts 14 and 22. All right. It says, confirming, um, yep, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the Most High. So, Yahweh Shai confirmed it to the apostles, you know what I mean? And that word go out to us too. You know, we got to continue in the faith because through much tribulation, we're going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, this is the this is Esau's kingdom. This is Esau's world governed by uh, Amalek. You know, them Jabru, small hatters. This is not our world. This is not our rest. But we get in the world. Like the scripture says, for we seek of a city, <coughs> a continuing city, you know, and our place is not going to end. But through the spirit, you know, we're going to have to go through things and the angel gave address the understanding of this so without further ado this is a uh, second address chapter one i'm sorry second address chapter seven verse one and it says when i and when i had made an end of speaking these words there was sent unto me an angel which had been sent unto me the night afore <clears throat> and he said unto me up address and hear the words that i am come to tell thee okay and I said, speak on my power. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place that it might be deep and great. But put the case, the entrance where net were narrow and like a river. Okay, it says, uh, who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? So the, 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 uh, the angel is breaking his, this, this, the sayings down, these visions down. Okay, and it says there is also another thing: a city is built and set upon a broad field, and it's full of all good things, and that's the kingdom. You know, starting with eternal life, you know, starting with peace, safety, these things. We're going to uh, imminent, preeminent health. You know, we're going to have we're going to have perfect health. But in order to get there, we got to go through these things. Okay, it says the entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place. To fall like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. And what did Yahweh Shai say? He says, broad is the way to destruction and narrow is the way. What? The way to what? To way to righteousness. And it says, <clears throat> and, and one path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. Right? And that's symbolic of the elect man. You know, where we congregate together. When we're out here on the highways and hedges, we do these lessons, we fellowship, and that's cool. But in reality, we're we're all in this walk on our own, developing a relationship with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai between him, them, and us, right? And so each man has to walk for themselves because none of us can save each other. None of us can save ourselves. The only one that can save us is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? So it says, 
if this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? It says, and I said, and I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel portion. So all this turmoil that we've been through, all the hell, all the destruction, all the captivities we went through, that's what we, that's part of the straight and narrow. The Lord was setting us straight for what we've done in our past lives and in this life and our, uh, for our iniquities. But we had to go through that in order to get to the next side, which is uh, an eternal side, which is the righteous side. Like there's a video, um, <coughs> Elder, um, Elder Yaquab, he said, uh, let me see if I can find that video. Uh, and this is the video that I was just referring to. This is the video <coughs> of high priest Elder Yaquab, uh, high priest Ariel's father. Right. And in this, and in this, this video right here, this short se section of this video, I want you to listen to what he says. Let me put this. School of universal practice from now. What this is all about is the true fact of the past that the Israelites are coming back to rule the future kingdom on this planet Earth. Mm -hmm. The Israelites was chased out of the land of Canaan many years ago, according to this Bible, by the Greeks and the Romans. And they set up many churches and synagogues trying to be us while we went into a negative set, setting of the Greeks and Romans to find out about the other side of what the Most High is showing us. He's showing us before we can bring the kingdom to educate us to the negative and the positive. Once we learn the negative, we will know how to set up the positive, which is righteousness on this planet Earth. And that's what this book is all about. Yeah, there it is. Like the elders said, we had to, we had to go through a negative phase in order to <clears throat> rule in righteousness, to set up a righteous kingdom, to know what not to do. And that's why I think it's in the same, uh, let me keep reading this, uh, verse 11. It says, verse 11, <clears throat> because for their sake, who is it there? I'm going to read verse 10 again. It says, and I said it so, Lord, then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. It says, because for their sakes I made the world. The earth was made for our sake. It wasn't made for uh, um, the, the children of men. It wasn't made for the wicked. All right. Because for their sake, I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now it's done. Now it's what done? What, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that now we would, we would experience the negatives. All right. We had, it wasn't always negative. You know, you had opportunities. We had opportunities. One chief one is during the time of King David and King Solomon, which is about a 40 year period, 80 year period if you want to, and in years of war that David had, you know, but those are like the time that we really had the entire planet, the known planet at that time in subjugation. All right. And these other nations, they had to follow our ways. Unlike now we're in there, we're in this negative space, this negative setting, and we were forced to follow Esau's ways and these other nations ways. Okay. Says, uh, again, because for their sakes, I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statues, then was the, then was the creed that now is it is now is done, right? Now it's done what? Now they're going to experience wickedness because obviously Eve went off into wickedness and wizardry, witchcraft and wizardry through that uh serpent, that man. And then she brought it back to Adam, but it counted when Adam went off, you know? Yeah, it's the woman's fault, but it says when Adam transgressed the statutes, then was the same said. <clears throat> uh, transgressed the statutes, then was decreed that now it's done. What is done? Now they will 
throughout these different generations, even millennia, we would experience uh, great times of negativity, watching the wicked rule, watching these other nations uh, surpass us, as well as we went into their ways, to the ways of the heathen, breaking the law, touching commandments in which the Lord set up for us to live righteously. Because just like the elder high priest elder was saying, um, um, elder high priest was saying, this Bible is the, is, is the key. The words in this Bible is the key to everything that's going on, everything that's happening. I'm paraphrasing what he said. It's the key, you know, and it's about the Israelites experience in this world going into these different negative situations. And we're experiencing one of the last negative situations, or if not the last negative situation, i.e. being governed by this devil, the, Ed the Edomite, namely Amalek, the so-called uh, Jabra. Right. He's the leader of the Edomites. Right. And they're they're oppressing us. You know, but even even with all that being said, the Lord is raising up his elect. Lord willing, we be some of those men, because just like the elders said, we had to experience the negative to go into the positive so that we could rule this world in righteousness. And you see what this world has become being governed by wickedness. It's, it's deteriorating big time, man. Every time a heathen sat on a throne of rulership in this world, it was another case of deterioration for the earth. Okay? And so, again, going through this negative space, because I think there's a, there used to be a longer video of this where he's, where the elder said, we're not a cursed people, man. You know, we're under the curse, but we're not a cursed people like these nations try to teach us. And those different negative spaces, they represent these, the rulership of these other nations, <clears throat> us breaking the law, such as commandments. And having to suffer for that. So let's keep on reading 2nd Edward chapter 7 verse 11 again. Because the, because for their sake I made the world. Right. The Lord the Lord created this world to be a dominion for the sons of the power. Okay. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now it is done. Verse 12. Then were the entrances of the world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils very painful because during the time of Adam, it wasn't like that for us. You know, during the time of Adam and Eve and the Adamites, we had everything. We were, we were straight. Adam was the king of the earth, man. And that's how we know he's a hollow shot too. He was the king of the earth. He didn't want to name these animals. He didn't want that, you know, through the spirit and power of your hollow shot, uh, was able to, uh, he was granted all that wisdom by the Most High, Yahweh, you know? So, because of that, because the entrances of this world were made narrow and full of sorrows, I want to actually see what this says in the simplified version. Give me a second. I'm trying to make this as concise as possible, but it's a spirit. They'll be jumping on you. And you really, you have no say-so in that. So, you have to just flow with it. But this is uh, Sirach. Ecclesiasticus chapter 7 verse 12 um, chapter 7 verse 12 it says do not do not devise against what see like this you got to be careful because sometimes the way they break this down it's 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 kind of goes off it says uh do not do no evil and evil will never overtake you Stay away from the wrong and it will take you away. Okay, it says, uh, yeah, I don't know what this is. So anyway, I don't know how they break that down, but let's keep on reading. This is, um, I'm back in Sarah chapter seven. I mean, second address. Oh, that's, I was in the wrong place. Slocky. The body of watching outside. I was like, what? Sarah, this second address chapter seven, verse 12 again. I was like, what? Second address, <coughs> chapter 12. Right. Chapter 7, verse 12. Second address, 7, verse 12. And again it says, And so the entrances of the world were made narrow and sorrowful and toilsome. They are few and evil, full of dangers involved in great hardship and that's what we as a nation have suffered and we're suffering now but the lord is raising he's taking that captivity off us slowly but surely 
until the day of the second coming of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. And it ain't going to be painful and hard no more. Let's keep on reading. <coughs> it says, uh, verse 13, for the interests of, of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. Yep. And it says right here, but the interests of the greater world, but the interests of the greater world are broad and safe and yield the fruit of immortality. And that's what we're going to have in the kingdom of heaven. We're going to have immortality. All right. The elder world is going to be what? The world to come. And it's going to bring immortal fruit, meaning that no Israelite is going to suffer the pain of death ever again. No Israelite is going to be wicked ever again. We're all going to be 100% righteous. Every Israelite from the elect to the two thirds that die on this side and death by pain. That's going to be the last time that they suffer that kind of pain. Okay, because it's really for our iniquities. You know. Again, uh, verse, uh, I'm sorry, verse 13 again. Second address, 7 and 13. For the interests of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. Right. So we got to go through these hardships. No matter how much we hate it, no matter how uncomfortable it makes us feel. And it's good to be uncomfortable because you don't get complacent when in uncomfortability. Okay. It's good to be uncomfortable because it gives you the mindset on what's really important right again if they then live in labor not to enter these straight vain things these straight and vain things they can never receive those that are laid up for them <clears throat> let's keep on reading now therefore why disquietest thou thyself seeing that thou art but a corruptible man and why art thou moved whereas thou art but mortal yeah because edges was lamenting for the nation when you read chapter 6 he, he says, oh, now, uh, chapter 6, 54 and down, says that these heathen that have been ever reputed as nothing have became have become to be lords over us. And we, your only begotten, your, that loves you, we haven't got our inheritance. But like the angel was telling Edris, all that is part of the straight and narrow things. So you shouldn't be upset when you face these things, you know, because we're nothing but mortal beings right now anyway. You know, our, our spirit is immortal, but this flesh is mortal. Why hast thou not considered in thy mind this thing that has come rather than, than that which is present? Right. So you see this present life. This is not, this is not it. <clears throat> this is not the end of all end. Esau is not going to rule in perpetuity, especially Amalek. They're not. They're coming to a fast end. They're boasting themselves and they're proud now and they're coming against the the, the the children of the Lord and they're, they're showing it. Look at all of this shit that's going on with all these so-called Negro celebrities that's, that's so-called waking up <clears throat> or that's clinging to the fact that they're Israelites and it's putting these small hats in an uncomfortable situation because they had, they the small hats used lies and deception and deceit to prop up this fake veneer that they are the Lord's people and they don't even act like the Lord's people. You know? I was going to do it. I'm hoping to do another lesson about a website that I got. It's, it's entitled uh, The Truth About the Talmud, man. And, and when you read some of this stuff that these people believe in, you know, it's it's despicable, man. You know, they kill people just because they're Gentiles. They just kill people. Just just do it. You know, even though the scripture says these nations are nothing, there's a certain way that you deal with these people, man. And these, 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 these Edomites, they don't know that. Why has thou back in seven uh, uh second address seven and sixteen, why has thou not considered in the mind in thy mind this thing that has come rather than that which is present? Then answered I and said, O Lord, that bearest rule, thou hast ordained in thy law that the righteous should inherit these things, inherit these things, but that the ungodly should perish. And like we just said, the ungodly is about to perish, man. He, he can't, you can't live forever in wickedness on no level, you know, the ungodly is Esau. He's going to perish. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things. See, even though the wicked is going to perish, the nevertheless, the righteous still shall suffer straight things, man. Let's look up that definition for straight. <clears throat> that definition for straight, okay, is a narrow passage of, of water 
connecting two seas or other large areas of water. A channel or sail used in reference to a situation characterized by a specific degree of trouble or difficulty. And that's what we have to go through, man. You know, and it's spiritual that we walk through the, uh, what is it, the, the Strait of Hamuz, something like that, to, to walk up out of Egypt, man. Because when we were walking out, we suffered a lot of straits, man, of the other nations and even of ourselves, man. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for, for wide. And that's what we do. We suffering straight things, difficult times, but we're hoping for a why, for a world that is in righteousness, that's, that's held up, that exalts the names of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You know, a world of righteousness, a world of, of, of good and not evil. For they that have done wickedly have suffered straight things and yet shall not see the why. Yeah. You know, two thirds of our people, they're going to have to suffer death by pain, then be born as children. Then they get to see the why, man. And these Edomites, they're never going to see the why, man. They're going to be in the kingdom, but they're going to be big time. They're going to be super slaves, man. I'm going to use that term. They're going to be super slaves, man. And we ain't going to have to make no movies and write no books about y'all slavery experience. We don't give a fuck. You Edomites going to be done away with at the slavery is over for you. But you got a thousand long years. A thousand long years of hardcore, unabated <laughs> captivity, man. And these other nations going to suffer it right along with you, but you're going to get the worst. For the for they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things, and yet shall not see the why. It says, uh, let me stop here. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things, and the hope for why. For they that have done wickedly have suffered straight things, and yet shall not see the why. And he said unto me, there is no judge above the heavenly father and none that have understanding above the highest. Exactly. For there be many that perish in this life because they despise the law of the most high that is set before them. Right. You see these different celebrities dropping dead. You see Ray Ray and Pookie, Shaniqua and Tonda, uh, 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 Tonda Shonda, little brother, Ray Ray and them. All these jakes being put to death. Why? It's not because they were cool people and a stray bullet hit one of you niggas in the head. No, it's because at the end of the day, you despise the law of the Most High that is set before you. Because as the scriptures say, as the scriptures say in Baruch, in the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1, and that's why I love doing these sit-downs because the Lord just be feeding us with, with scriptures, man. This I didn't have anything set up, but yet these things are, are flowing. It says Baruch 4 and 1, this is the book of the commandment of the Heavenly Father. And the law that endure forever, all they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Right, because when you come to these to this this word and you you apply these law and commandments to your daily life, you can't keep it perfect, but you do the best that you can, and you seek that face of Yahweh Bashin Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> you're gonna come to life, man. But all those that leave it shall die, and two thirds of our people have separated themselves from the Lord, and the Lord has separated them in reality. You know, so again, for there be many that perish in this life because they despise the law of the most high that is set before them. Exactly. And uh, they show in video of this dude take off right before he passed away. The night that he passed away, he was hanging out with his cousin, a brother, whatever, <coughs> his uncle smoking weed, you know, passing a blunt around, just being a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Uh, violating his, the law, central commandments of the heavenly father, you know. And everybody's saying, well, he was a nice guy. He was just because he was quiet. Don't mean a nigga was right. You know, he was, he was, he wasn't living right, man. I don't know what the nigga ate, but I guarantee you it had to imply it with some shrimp, crab and lobster up in there. If, if not pork, you know, eating other abominable shit, doing other abominable things with these higher ups in this so-called music industry. And he's just the first of many shit. The Lord can take out the rest of the Migo niggas, man. None of them niggas is right. And all the niggas that support them. And the reason why they perish is because what? They, 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 because they despise the law of the most high that is set before them. As the scripture says, when have the righteous ever perish? You know? Or, or, or I mean, when were the righteous ever, um, forsaken? Okay. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. <clears throat> Um, Job, chapter 
four or six says uh Uh, whoever whoever died being innocent, I think that's what it says. It's in the book of Job. Yeah, Job. Uh, This is the book of Job, chapter 4, verse 7. Job 4 and 7. Okay, it says, Remember, I pray thee, whoever perish, being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? Exactly. Let's look and see what that says in uh, NLT. Job, stop here. Job 4 and 7. Job 4 and 7. Again, it says, remember, I pray thee, whoever perish being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? In uh, NIV, NLT, it says, stop and think. Do the innocent die? When have the upright been destroyed? Consider now who being innocent has ever perished. Where were the upright ever destroyed? Right, because if you are upright, you have no reason to be destroyed. Now, granted, in this flesh, in this lives that we lived on this earth, we're completely wicked. And we went off completely, but we're repentant. Okay, the elect is not going to be somewhere just standing, smoking weed, being and get shot in the head, being a part of a crowd that you shouldn't even be amongst. You know, no matter how much money they claim you got, man, you know, the elect will move in wisdom, man, and won't be put in a condition or a place like that. So <clears throat> nobody perish being innocent. For there be many that perish back in second, Edger 7 and 20 for the be for there be many that perish because they despise the law of the most high. That is set before them. All right. <clears throat> For the heavenly father have given straight commandment to such as came what they should do to live even as they came and what they should observe to avoid punishment. man. OK. To seek the Lord. Yahweh was shy. That's the way to avoid punishment, especially the ultimate punishment, which is the, the, the MOTB and the nuclear fire, death by nuclear fire. OK. The Lord gave straight commandment to such as came what they should do to live. All right. And see, Esau, Edom, he doesn't apply these scriptures. He just think that because he's been living, doing wickedness at such a high level in degree that the Lord is with them, like that this really their world, you know. But they're going to come in for that, man. You can't live eternally and mortally and be wicked. That just doesn't work. Nevertheless, verse 22, nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but spake against him and imagined vain things. And that's right. And that's what Jake do. You bring this truth to our people. The first thing they do is be disobedient. And they speak, uh, <clears throat> they speak against the Most High because they think they're speaking against us while we're out there preaching and prophesying. But in reality, you're speaking against the Heavenly Father because these are his words to his son. And you imagine vain things. And so. All hell breaks loose upon you. Now you want to seek the Lord, but it's too late. It's going to be too late then. Verse 7, the second edge of 7, 23. And deceived themselves by their wicked deeds. Exactly. And said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his ways. And that's what our people do. You got a lot of Jake that's so-called atheists, man. But then they wonder why shit fucking happens to them. Verse 24. But, but his law have they despised and denied his covenants and his statutes again but his law have they despised yeah because jake don't want to follow the law such a commandment so you have about you shot you want to do the other things you want to be an idolater and, and and add sin to sin and denied his covenants and his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works is right that's why jake is in the condition that they're in. You go to any ghetto USA, any barrio uh, in South America, you go to any favela in Brazil, and anywhere that our people are at, especially in great concentration, guess what's happening to them? They're being destroyed, man, because they are not performing the works of the Lord, and they have not been faithful. Verse 25, And therefore, address for the, em for the empty are empty things, and for the full are full things. That's right. <clears throat> 
and therefore edges for the empty or empty things and for the full things are the full things. Behold, the time shall come that though that these tokens which I have told thee shall come to pass, and the bride shall appear. And who is the bride? The elect. And she coming forth shall be seen that now is withdrawn from the earth. That's right. And whosoever is delivered from the four set of evils shall see my wonders, which is the elect, which is going to be that first partakers of eternal life, the chariots being saved. And putting into the chariots of Yahweh Bashem was shot, watching the whole uh, the world collapse in the sight of our Lord Yahweh Bashem was shot, watching the kingdom of heaven be built up. You know what I'm saying? Watching that, uh, but again, being partakers first of that eternal life, man. <coughs> for my sons, for my son Yahweh Shai shall be revealed with those that be with him. That's right. That's the that's the, that's the elect. And it look even 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 the, the apocrypha speaks about Yahweh Shai, man. But these people, like vocab alone, you don't reverence the apocrypha. The the J Bruce don't even read it. They don't read the New Testament or nothing. But it says, "For my son Yahweh Shai shall be revealed with those that be with them, and of those that be with them is the elect, and they that remain shall rejoice within four hundred years." And that's. This stuff was happening even back then. In that 400 year period, I think it was the time between Edris and Yahweh Shai, man. Let's keep on reading. It says, uh, after these years shall my son Yahweh Shai die and all men that have life, right? Because all the men that lived on the time of Yahweh Shai are gone, but they're back again, right? They die. <laughs> Ain't nobody on this earth 2,000 years old, man. After these years shall my son Yahweh Shai die. And all men that have life in the world shall be turned into the old silent seven days, like as in a form of judgment, so that no man shall remain. <clears throat> and after seven days, the world that yet awaketh not shall be raised up and that shall die. That is corrupt. And you see this going on. And the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her reincarnation. And so shall the dust, though so shall the dust those that dwell in silence and the secret places shall deliver those souls that were committed unto them and the most high shall appear upon a seat of judgment and misery shall pass away this is the kingdom of heaven we're no longer going to have any more misery brothers and sisters no more and the long suffering shall have an end we're not going to be suffering in the kingdom we won't give a damn about them other nations but we're not we're not ever going to suffer we're not going to be robbed and, uh, the, uh, being what is it defrauded by the devil that's not gonna happen man it says but judgment only shall remain truth shall stand and faith shall wax strong and that's what's gonna be happening when you nations get put to death it's gonna be for judgment's sake so y'all were just killing us arbitrarily just because of the hatred that you had you wasn't doing it because we we uh broke the heavenly father's commandments you weren't doing that the Lord allowed you to do it because we did that, but you weren't doing that because of that. These people were not following the law such commandments when they had us in captivity, even to this very day. But in the kingdom of heaven, judgment is going to remain. Truth is going to stand. Because in this world, truth doesn't stand. And faith shall wax strong. And the work shall follow. And the reward shall be showed. And the good deeds shall be of force. And wicked deeds shall bear no rule, right? Because in this world we live in, wickedness has rule. It's bearing complete rule. And you rarely see righteousness in this world. But in the kingdom of heaven, <clears throat> righteousness is going to be way more powerful than the wickedness is in this world. And wicked and, and wickedness in our kingdom is not going to bear any no rule. You're going to have it. There's going to be spots of it. But it's not going to be with us. It's going to be with these other nations. And when they go off, they're going to be judged to the fullest extent of the law. <laughs> All right, I'm the law. For real. Okay, it says, then said I, Abraham prayed first for the Sodomites and Moses for the fathers that sinned in the wilderness, right? Because a lot was amongst them Sodomites that was in, um, in, uh, in, in Sodom and Gomorrah. And he was like, Lord, if it's 10 that believe in you, you know, and then he went to the numbers, you can read that for yourself. And Moses, he, Moses prayed for who? For the fathers that sinned in the wilderness, our fathers. And Yahweh shot after him for Israel. In the time of Achan. That's right. Okay. And Samuel. 
and David for the destruction. Solomon for the, oh, again, and Samuel and David for the destruction. The destruction of who? Of our enemies. And Solomon for them that should come to the sanctuary. And Helias for those that receive rain. And for the dead that they might, that he might live. And uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiah for the people in the time of Sennacherib and many, and many for many. Right? Even so now, seeing corruption is growing up and wickedness increased and the righteous have prayed for the ungodly, wherefore shall it not be so now also? <clears throat> and he answered me and said, this present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. This is not it. Therefore have they prayed for the weak. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. And that wasn't during the time of Edris. That wasn't during the first time Yahweh Shai came on the scene. It's going to be now when Yahweh Shai comes, man. This is, the, this is the time that we're living in. And the day of doom is fastly approaching. And shall be the end of this time. And the beginning of immortality for to come. Wherein corruption is past. Those immortal bodies that I'm telling you, man, super extraterrestrials on this earth, man. We're gonna be, we're gonna be it. And intemperance <clears throat> is at an end. Infidelity is cut off. Righteousness is grown, and truth is sprung up. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that have gotten the victory. Right, because we're the ones that is gonna get the victory through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But Esau, Edom, there's not going to be a man. There, there shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed. Nobody's going to be able to save Esau <laughs> when he's destroyed. Or you other heathen nations, man. And nor to oppress him that have gotten a victory. You're not going to oppress us because we've gotten a victory. I answered then and said, this is my first and last saying, that it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam, or else when it was given him, to have restrained him from sinning. So, he doesn't. He didn't understand that it had Adam had to sin. It was already written. It had to go that way. The Lord put the spirit on that man, that evil serpent, to do what he did. Just like he's doing to Esau, eat him now. For what profit is for men now in this present life, in this present time, to live in heaviness and at the death look for punishment? Which the punishment is talking about when they're reincarnated as babies again, and they come in this time. Okay, it says, and O thou Adam, what hast thou done? So now he's lamenting. For though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, but we all that come come of thee, right? Because we had to experience the negatives, like Elder High Priest Yaiquap said, we had to experience the negative in order to go into the to the positive. Okay, all right. It says uh. Talking okay, about that. This is for the uh, again, O thou Adam, what hast thou done? For thou it was, for thou it was thou that sinned. Thou art not fallen alone, but we all that come of thee. For what profit is it unto us if there be promised us in a mortal time, whereas we have done works that bring death? Verse 50. And that there be promised us an everlasting hope whereas ourselves being most wicked are made vain and that there are laid up for us dwellings of health and safety whereas we have lived wickedly yeah even though we live wickedly the lord is going to pardon the elect the elect has already been pardoned right and they're going to inherit a, a dwelling of health and safety you know with some things we don't have down here and that the glory of the most high is kept to defend them which have led a weary life, whereas we have walked in the most wicked ways of all. And that there should be showed a paradise whose fruit endure forever, wherein is security and medicine. With Sith we shall not enter into it. For we have walked in an unpleasant places, our iniquities and sins. And that the face of them which have used abstinence shall shine above the stars, Whereas our faces shall be blacker than darkness. Yeah, because the ones that use abstinence is the elect. And Edris is one of them too. He's a, he's part of the elect. Okay. And for while we lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it at the death. Yeah. 
and that, and that suffering after death is being born back in the earth, not a place called hell. Then answer he me and said, this is the condition of the battle. That's right, baby. You got to go through this shit. Hey, the why do y'all about y'all shy? Man, it's, hey, the, the Lord is cold, man, but he, on, he always on point, man. He says, then he, me, and said, this is the condition of the battle, which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. This is part of the battle, us catching hell and going through stuff, even hearing these promises, and they're not immediately right there in your face. They're not immediately happening right then. That promise is the hope. Did not Paul say we are prisoners of hope? He like said, hey, that's the condition of the battle to go through them hardships and suffer them straight things, man. <laughs> it says, which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. That if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the things that I said. And the ones that's going to get the victory is the elect, which we are hoping for. That's what we call ourselves the hopeful elect. Okay? The ones that's going to be overcome in two-thirds. And they're going to suffer as as he as Ed just said. But if he <coughs> get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. Because we got the victory through Yahweh Shai. That sacrifice wasn't a small sacrifice at all. For this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, Choose thee life that thou mayest live. And life is in this book, the Bible, brothers. It's in the book. It's the book. It's in the book. Just take a look. Second Edger 760. Nevertheless, they believe not him, nor yet the prophets after him, nor more, nor no, nor me, which has spoken unto them. That there should not be such heaviness in the destruction as shall be joy over them that are persuaded to salvation. And the ones going to be persuaded to salvation is the elect. There shouldn't be no heaviness in his district and there and that there should not be such heaviness in their destruction as shall be joy over them which are persuaded to salvation. And that's what we're doing through the chariot of the Lord. We persuade men. I answered then and said, I now I know, Lord that the Most High is called merciful, and that he have mercy upon them which are not yet come into the world, which is the elect, which is us. The Lord is having, I'm praying that we part of the elect. The Lord is having mercy upon us. <clears throat> and he had, he's had mercy upon us even before we yet came into the world. And upon those also that turn to his law. So, yep, the Lord had mercy upon us, man. And it says, uh, and that he is patient and long suffering those that have sinned as his creatures, because the Lord has been patient with us and long suffering, even though we have sinned against him. And that he is bountiful for it, he is ready to give where it needeth. Okay. And that is of great mercy for the multiply for he multiplied more and more mercies to them that are present. And that are past, and also to them which are to come. This mercy, the mercy, show mercies of David, man. For if he shall not multiply his mercies, the world would not continue. And that's the reason why we here, we still alive, because for the the Lord's mercy and that remnant sake. And that shows you, hey, the why do you about Shmuel Shai? Call Allah you about Shmuel Shai for that, man. For it shall not. I'm sorry. For he shall not multiply his mercies. For if he shall not multiply his mercies, the world will not continue. The world, the world of Israel will be done with them that inherit therein. And he pardoneth, for if he did not so of his goodness, that they which have committed iniquities might be eased of them, the ten thousand part of men should not remain living. That's right. You know? <clears throat> Shirley Gilly. And being judged, if he should not forgive them that are cured with his word. And we've been cured with the Lord's word from sin. And put out the multitude of contentions. It's the last verse. There should be very few left preadventure in an innumerable multitude. And that's what's going, that's what's coming. It's going to be the innumerable multitude is going to be saved. Starting with the governing body, the 144,000 men from 12,000 men for each of the 12 tribes of Israel, as well as the mixed multitude and innumerable multitude. And even that's small, but hey, the Lord have mercy. So that's it. Shalom.